If you're traveling to the beach with a dog, you want to make sure you are protecting them while you are out on the beach from other people and from things that you might encounter while you are out playing. So let's break down a couple of my favorite things, but I want you to be in my comments too, giving your suggestions, your ideas, and things that have worked really well for you so that everybody can find something that's going to work for their dog. This is a collective community conversation. So we want to make sure that your dog is safe while you're out and about. I always recommend that dogs be on leashes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a short leash. I love a good long leash. That gives my dog the freedom to run, to play, but I still have control of my dog should something happen. If I need to rein them in because somebody is behaving in a way that is not healthy for them, I can get them into me. If we're swimming in the ocean and a tide catches them or something happens, I can get them back into me. I'm making sure my dog is in a harness so that I'm not pulling on their neck. And that way I have control, but they also have that freedom. So I love a good 20, 30, 50 foot long lead that is waterproof and bonus points for floating on the water to keep everybody safe and happy and healthy. I also love a good hands-free leash that clips around my waist. Now, not everybody can do a hands-free leash. If you are not physically capable of doing it, please don't do that. But a hands-free leash gives me a lot of confidence and security in my time with my dogs so that I can be hands-free. I can take my phone and I can film my dogs, but I also have them connected to me should I drop a leash or should something happen. They're not always connected to me, especially if they're on a long lead, but I make sure that I have options available to me so that I can handle whatever situation happens. If somebody comes up to us or a dog comes up to us or something's going on in the water, I have control, which I really like. I also make sure that I have an emergency kit with me. My emergency kit is going to have anything that I need for basic first aid. So if they get hurt, if they step on something, if something is eaten that they shouldn't eat, I have things to kind of wrap them up, to trim away any fur that I need to, to kind of clean things up and to make them vomit should they eat something that is not healthy for them that I got to get out right now. So I make sure I have an emergency kit. Depending on what I'm doing, I'll take it out to the beach with me or I'll leave it in my hotel room or my car, depending on the journey that I am having on that day so that I have access to it. If we're swimming, I'm obviously not going to carry a backpack with me, but if we're just going for a walk, I'll take an emergency kit with me just to have it should I need it. But I also make sure that I am paying attention to the world around me because I can control me and I can control my dog, but I cannot control the outside forces from the water to the beach to the people and the creatures on the beach. I don't have control or say over that. So I am making sure that I am paying attention to who's around me, who's trying to come up to my dog, what's going on. I know where people are and I keep a good eye on where I need to go should I need to find safety or to get us away from a situation. So I know who's there, what's going on. And I'm very, very aware, especially of off-leash dogs and other animals in the vicinity because sometimes we have horseback riders and all sorts of things. And I need to be aware of those situations. So you can... Do things like um, prepare yourself for a potential dog fight or a dog issue. Not everybody's controlling their dogs while we're out and about. I talked about this in another video and I'll give you kind of an overview of it, but I also recommend watching our park safety video. That one's going to be really good for you as well. And all those things apply to the beach too. So if you have a dog that is being aggressive, you want to make sure that you are talking to your vet, talking to a dog trainer before you go inserting yourself into a situation. So have that information before you're traveling or before you're going into a situation where you could encounter other dogs. But if something is happening, there are a couple of things you can do to kind of prevent it or to break it up if you absolutely need to. Now be safe, be careful. Don't put your hand in between them and get bit. Don't get hurt during this, but I know there's a lot that goes into it. So if you need to, uh, there's some great trainers out on TikTok and social media that teach you how to grab the collars and twist to kind of cut off their air so that they pause for a minute so you can get them apart. I'm not the person to teach you that. Go learn that from a professional. And I don't love that option. That is like a last resort kind of option. What I do like is that they actually make products that are really loud, really sharp noises that will scare dogs away. So it's like a little tube, kind of like pepper spray that you can be using to scare the dogs off. I am not an expert in that. I have not tried that yet, but those are products available to you. What I do like is that we actually have the ability to use uh, a water bottle to scare off the dogs. This is a tip my vet gave me. And so you want to look for a water bottle that has one of those pop tops. Remember back when we were in like middle school and you put the little top between your teeth and you just popped it and you had the water and then you pushed it back in? That. That is the kind of water bottle that you need. And you just squeeze it and it squirts that stream of water at the dogs and confuses them. And that gives you enough time to break them up. 
Now, some people will tell you, you can throw like a towel on them or a blanket on them that disorients them and confuses them and you can pull them apart. I have actually talked about in other places that you can use uh, compressed air. So you know how they have those cans of compressed air to clean your computers with? They make electronic versions of that that you can recharge. That's just compressed air that gets the dust out of your computers. If you're in your home or you're near your place of living, you can use an air compressor to kind of scare the dog so that you don't get water everywhere, but that's not really practical for the beach. So taking that bottle of water that you can squirt at them is going to be very valuable to you. And you want to make sure that you're paying attention to where you're going, where you're walking, what you're doing so that your dog is not stepping on a jellyfish or debris that has washed up from the sea. There's rocks and there's sticks and there's sea, um, uh, uh, driftwood. That was the word. There's stuff that they can get hurt on. You want to make sure they're not going to eat things. They're not going to step on any shells. Please be careful of shells, especially if there's like bars of shells on the beach. Sometimes that happens at different beaches. Don't walk over that that hurts you, that hurts your dog. So make sure you're, you know, being aware of those things and you're going around some of those things that could be a little destructive to your dog's body. And then just make sure that you're mindful of where they're sniffing, what they're doing, what they're consuming, where they're playing with. And also be aware that if they drink too much salt water, they can get sick. So if they play a little bit in the ocean, that's fine, but just make sure they're not drinking too much of that or eating too much of the foam because that can backfire on you. And you want to make sure, of course, you go through our beach playlist. We have lots of safety tips, lots of travel tips, everything from riding in a car to picking a good dog friendly and accommodating because those are different things. Hotels, we have all sorts of really great breakdowns on how you can be thriving with your dog at the beach. So if you've got questions, now's the time to drop them. You want to make sure you're protecting your dog at the beach from the water, from the sand, from the things on the beach, from the creatures on the beach from the people and from the other dogs on the beach. So there's lots and lots of information and we want your tips and our community conversation in the chat below. So go ahead and drop your tips for dog safety at the beach. We're going to come back with more episodes because there's a lot of things we can talk about with this. I love taking my dogs to the beach. So there's so much that we can learn and thrive from inside of this playlist. We will drop more episodes every single day, helping you navigate the world of being a dog parent to give your dog the best life possible from documenting your dog's life through photos and videos to traveling, to the tools and resources you need to level up their life. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes and happy beach vacationing.